and welcome back. So on today's episode of converting the Piaggio from a 4T to a 2T, you can see things have gotten a little more exciting. So I've decided to put the RC1 motor into this frame. That doesn't mean that you still couldn't do this swap with any regular old Piaggio motor. Um, I'm going to try and make it so that it's still doable for anybody um, with any type of motor, but I just kind of had this here and it seemed like a good fit. So I've kind of stripped the bodywork off of it uh, just to get at the electrical because that's the major hurdle that is now uh, what I am facing. Um, because this is a newer Piaggio, they come with an immobilizer. Now, <clears throat> that pretty much runs most everything on the bike. Um, so it's the CDI, um, and it so it runs the coil so the bike won't start without a programmed key. Now in my case, because I got this bike as basically scrap, uh, because the motor was blown, I don't have a key. Uh, so this twofold for me is going to be not only removing this, but also making it so I can just put a regular old key um, in the tumbler and not have to worry about the programming that's on it. <clears throat> So, um, what it looks like right now, I've printed out the uh, service manual, and I will be putting a link to this in the description to some sort of download service, because the only place I could find it was on Scribed, and it, I had to upload a file to get it off there. It was just a very frustrating thing, so I will provide a link at the bottom for this for free for anyone who has a Piaggio Fly or a Typhoon or any of those um, newer four-stroke Piaggio scooters with this weird CDI immobilizer box. Um, so yeah, we're gonna get right into it here now and uh, dig through this wiring and try and figure out uh, how to bypass this. So you can see here this A side, which is the three pin connector side of this harness is actually, which is this side here, is actually the CDI unit, um, which I assume is only energized when the main unit is also energized. So we're going to be removing that from the system. You can also see on their diagram here, the charge system runs into this box and then runs out of this box. So we may have to do some jumpering here to uh, make it so that it runs off the normal um, two-stroke style one. But this is pretty straightforward. Uh, we'll, we're going to be basically running, most likely running one of these legs to ground on the coil. We'll be running one of these into our CDI box here, and the other one's going to run down to power, and then we'll have to run a trigger, which is going to be coming off of here somewhere maybe. That may actually be what that is there because that should normally be running into this. So I bet you 14 is, yeah, 14 is pickup. So this page here also kind of shows what we need to know. Um, a connector, which is that three pin connector, shows you negative for the high voltage regulator, ground after ignition key switch, and high coil and lights relay. So those are all the pins. And then down here we also have the electronic ignition device connector. Uh, it tells us like key switch on power, uh, ground. So most of these it looks like it actually just is sensor. There's the secondary air injection system solenoid valve which we don't need. Lights relay control. That one might be important. Um, and it looks like we may also have to convert the voltage regulator over as well. So um, to the other style. This is a three phase wound setup. So we'll see here. So the first problem we run into 
is to get the lights to work. You can see we have an output from the regulator that runs up to this relay, which is on the front of the bike right next to where this computer is. Um, and then the lights run over, the power runs over to all of the lighting switches and circuits. Uh, but it's triggered by the immobilizer CDI unit. So pin seven is a ground and pin three from the CDI side uh, turns the relay on. So whenever the, the CDI is energized, then the relay turns on. Really simple solution for that one. Um, cut those wires coming out of the relay, turn one of them down to a ground, symbol for ground, and then run the other one to switched 12 volt signal uh, there's a few 12 volt signals that you can just tap into any one of those. This is the light relay. It's normally mounted on this gold plate, but I ripped it off because it had the immobilizer on it. So these wires here, this blue one and this purple one, you're going to want to take one of those and connect it to this orange wire on the 8 pin connector coming out of the immobilizer. That will be your key switched. And then take the other one put it on like an eyelet loop and ground it to the frame. And then every time you turn the key on, that will turn on the lights. Okay, so after we figured out the lighting switch system, um, hooking that lead to a 12 volt switch and the other one to ground, so that it turns on when you turn the key on. Uh, the other thing we will need to figure out is the regulator rectifier. So this uses a five pin regulator rectifier. We are going to need to convert it to the 8 pin style, although you could use one of the older um, 5 or 6 pin ones as well, but the one that all the ones that I have are 8 pin, so that's the one I'm going to use. Um, you're on your own if you need to do it, but the, this there would be useful information inside of these. So this is the 4 stroke wiring diagram, and this is the 2 stroke. Um, you can see here. I've made some notes on here. So, in order to hook up the seven or the eight pin regulator rectifier, um, we'll start over here on number one, AC services. Uh, that's the gray wire or pin labeled number one. These are all labeled. So pin number one is this guy here. If you're looking at the connector, uh, pin number one goes to pin 30 or that's, but there's a sh easier way to do that is go to pin one of the five pin regulator. So on this guy, furthest one over, it's number one. So you're going to hook that guy into there. And you're probably gonna need a harness of some sort. Um, I have a couple of derby harnesses here. And you're probably gonna need to cut off that piece not only will you need to cut that off, but you'll also need to cut yourself off the <clears throat> uh, coil harness lead, a section of that. And then as well, you're probably also going to need to cut off the stator connector and wire that in. So you will need those pieces in order to do this. So pin three and four here are for the uh, oil and fuel tank sender. Um, from my understanding of this circuit, the uh, lights and stuff will not come on if you don't have 12 volts pumped into these. Um, you can pump it into either one of them. I think they're both connected. Um, but it's kind of like a thing to tell you that the oil tank is out of oil because I know on mine I could not get the lights to work until I plugged in the oil tank sender, even though I deleted the tank. So I actually just cut the sender up and plugged it in its place. But you could also make a jumper. So then for the blue and red, uh, which is pin five here, um, you're going to need to, um, from the ignition switch 12 volts, you're going to need to run a wire down to that and then that will also have a T in it and one of those will go to pin three. So one, two, three 
of this of this on the connector side because we're going to be eliminating that um and that does all the dc stuff like the electric start but if you're using that i'm not going to get into that but uh the brake light is dc and the horn is dc so that just jumpers out and goes to there pin six is ground it can go to ground you can connect that up to pin two of this guy which also goes to ground so you can do most of the wires you're going to need you'll be able to pull out of the harness where this connects into um, with the exception of your, you may have to do one from a 12 volt output from ignition switched down to pin five and you're going to have to add in this number two and you may also have to add in this yellow number eight um, and those both go the, the number two and eight go to the stator on the motor so they'll be coming out of that stator harness that I showed you and next up we have the CDI this is the 2014 ignition setup it runs into this coil here which is a two wire I'm gonna take a guess and say one of those is a trigger and one of those is just a 12 volt input signal but I don't know. It has a transformer or something built into the top of this thing. So I feel like this may be a smart coil. So it may actually trigger on its own. And it has its own transformer to step up the voltage from 12 volts. But I'm not entirely sure. That's just a kind of an educated guess. And then this is the CD. That's the little boxy do shown up here on the top. I want to eliminate this but still maintain ignition and also have a kill switch that works. So we want to try and replicate this setup. So because this one's, you can't use the, the stator off of the other one, and we're going to be using the two-stroke stator, which is on the two-stroke motor you're using. Um, out of the stator, we're going to have a green, and the green is going to go into the ignition switch, and also the kill button and you'll see that here and here so it actually goes up to pin two on this guy uh, which is this middle pin on this three pin connector so let's just put my little chicken scratch diagram up next to it here so we can see so the green wire somewhere is here where it comes out on, on the number two connector, you're going to need to probably add a green a wire and loom it down into the stator wiring. Again, onto the stator connector that plugs into the motor on the flywheel side. Um, then the white wire will need to be added in. You'll be able to add it in with this, most likely. So you'll have a wire coming out of this that's going to actually run all the way over to the CDI onto the second pin here. I'll put it this way so it's right onto the second pin in the middle. So the first one is the green one, which is the uh, charging side circuit, but also has the kill switch and the ignition switch. The secondary one is the uh, ground for all of those two coils and then the also this third one which is going to be red uh, is goes to the ignition pickup and also will need to be added in but you'll be getting this from here so you'll just run the wires cut this extra long then you can run this over to the CDI and just put two blade connectors onto that and then with both of those done you should actually be able to start the bike. You should have both ignition, charging, and lights. Then to add uh, to my own headache, this is the ignition I'm going to be using. So this is a Minarelli uh, MVT DD. Um, I'm actually going to be wiring this in in place of the stator on mine and using a different ignition I had to make my own MBT hub uh, with the pickups on it to run. Uh, so 
this is what I'm going to be using on mine uh, just so that I can have lights and whatnot because the MVT that comes with or sorry the Selectra that comes with the uh, MHR motor does not allow you to run lights um, so I made a backing plate up which you can see here that bolts onto the cases that this bolts onto and then I machined up a new hub because the Piaggio ones don't fit and the Minarelli ones don't work either so it needed a Minarelli spacing with a Piaggio taper and uh, that's what I made up. So mine's going to be slightly different so I'm not going to be able to walk you through all of the wiring that I do but it this is pretty much covers most of it. Um, if you have any questions I can try my best to get you through it. Um, this will also help you if you wanted to just get rid of the immobilizer. Like I said, if you lost all your keys or whatever, you could probably rig it up with a CDI box just so that it would run without the keys. Because I think in order to get the replacement keys, you basically have to buy a new CDI and a new tumbler and ignition and everything. So that kind of sucks. So grab your harness that you're going to use as your donor harness. Um, I'd recommend trimming back as far as you can to get as much wire as you can so you don't have to add in a bunch of splices. So starting at the uh, stator hookup, it has shares the same connector as the one that I want to put on there. So that saves me a little bit of effort. What I can actually do is just depin this one for the two wires that are in there and then I can add the extra ones in to go up to the regulator. This blue one here runs up to the regulator and this green one runs up to pin two up on the three pin connector on the immobilizer box. So uh, we can use that one to tie in to the kill switch and everything. So to get this apart, I'm just showing it on this one because it's easier to see. There's a little tab there and a little tab here. You flick that up and it opens up like this. Then to pull the wire out, you go from the front side here. There's a locking clip right there. You pull that up and pull back at the same time. Now there is also a weather pack seal on there, so that may give you a little bit of tension. Sometimes you gotta push it a little bit forward first, but that's how you pull it out. So the little clips are inside this, this hole here. So these style 2D pin, if you're holding the connector like this, you have to take your pry tool and try and get it on top of the connector and pry out and down. You can actually see there's a little tab. It's probably hard to see through with the camera, but there's a tiny tab on the metal. You're gonna have to try and push that in and pull back at the same time. And then when you want them to connect back in, you're gonna have to pry. You can see the tab there now. So you're gonna need to pry that tab back out or push it out. Otherwise it won't click back into place. So that's the trigger for the relay, that's the ground for the relay, and connecting those two together makes it so that the key switch and the kill switch will turn the motor off. And the rest of these you can just tape up and then tape and put, I would use solder or connectors or crimp connectors or something and some shrink wrap on these ones and then just retape this harness all back together. This is a fairly long video as it is so I'm going to cut it there. If I have any supplementary stuff that needs to be added in uh, I will make a second video just showing all that stuff. Uh, any corrections or anything like that um, and link to it down at the bottom in the description. Uh, so uh, take care and see you next time.